Tom Carey here on the set of God's Unchanging Word. I wanted to introduce myself because we are doing an email alert that's going to come to you on Friday mornings. In fact, this is so new for us now that we want to, we don't even have a name for it. We, we, we're looking for a name to, to bring you information each morning. And we're hoping to, over the course of the year, be able to come in on our set for God's Unchanging Word to bring you updates and news uh, prophecy, events that's taking place every single week in a miniature format to include things we'll be talking about for services, for church, for the holy days, and for whatever comes up. So uh, it's very new to us. So we hope you'll tune in and tell all your friends. If they'll go to the website for God's Unchanging Word, if they go to gucw.org, on the right-hand corner, there's a little tab that says sign up for the email alerts. It's real simple. Just click on that, add your email address, and send it off, and you're signed up and ready to go. So we didn't want to wait until after the feast to begin this because of the information that I want to share with you today, which we believe is extraordinary. And so we wanted to go ahead and bring that to you today. And like I said, we don't even have a name yet for our, our, our tidbits or spotlights or our shorts, whatever name we come up with. In fact, if you want to, send an amen. See if we can, we can use it for these little specials. But the information I want to share with you this morning is very important. And some of you may have already gotten it during the week. First of all, let me tell you about two events. The very first one, it's called a New Ecumenical Gathering. This is going to take place in Jerusalem, and it's trying to bring in all faiths. Now, this goes beyond what the Pope has been doing for the past couple years, and we'll be talking about that at a later time. This is called a house for all believers. It's going to open up in Jerusalem, and believe me, it's going to cause some controversy over there. This was, this was just released this week uh, in the news, it was, it's actually been a report that came out in August 14th. It's just been sent out for letting everybody know what's going on. It's called the New Interfaith Spiritual Gathering for Christians, Jews, and Muslims. Now understand, this is all going to take place in Jerusalem. That will take place from September 4th through September 23rd. This is very important for what, what's coming on because i got to bring you some information that's not as positive as they're trying to make about this kind of a movement. From September 12th through September 24th, the leaders of that event will gather together from the 12th through the 23rd to perform an 11-day, what they're calling, a consecration. When God consecrates something, he makes it holy. Now, now, we need to understand what's going on here. These people are bringing leaders of different faiths from around the world into Jerusalem. And in this movement, the leaders of that movement are going to take the time while they're there to do something that only God can do, to consecrate, to make holy. Now, we can set apart things. We can do certain things. But when they're doing it, they're talking about setting things apart to make them holy. When something is consecrated, it is made holy. Like God said, the seventh day he set aside. When God calls his people out of the world, he consecrates them or he sets them aside for holy purpose. So this is really, really important. So we need to understand that movement and keep an eye on what's going on there. You know, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out in the months, in the years ahead. The second thing is probably even more important and more alarming. This past week, the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem have appointed a new high priest. Now, I heard that. I, I kind of I sat at my desk when I, when I got this email, and I'm just, I'm just staring at this. A new high priest... Now, I'm, I'm looking at that, and, and, I'm, and you've got to understand the same thing. We have a high priest. His name is Jesus Christ. So what are we looking at here? This is alarming, is that now that they have a high priest, or one they claim is a high priest, what can they do? They can begin what they believe 
is the reinstatement of the temple service, which includes the sacrificial system. Do you realize what I just said here? Now, in the past, we had watched the Temple Mount and many of the others. They're trying to reconstruct the temple so that they can put into play the sacrificial systems and the order of the priesthood from the Old Testament. They now believe they have, they have beyond those bounds. They don't really need the temple to actually begin it. They can begin it without the temple actually being built. In the headlines of this report, and this is put out by, uh, by a rabbi, and I'll tell you about him in just a second. In this report, it says that the temple service could begin one week away, and this was, this was given to me early in the week, so anytime next week, from the time you get this, which will be on Friday morning in this email alert, is that sometime next week, they will have the right they claim to begin the temple service. And they're gonna begin by offering sacrifices of grain and things like that. But eventually, they're going to get to where they're going to be offering animal sacrifices in Jerusalem again. This is the person who put the, the release out, is Adam Elihu Berkowitz. He is, uh, he's the featured writer for the Breaking Israeli News. Uh, he made uh, a liar to Israel in 1991. He served in the IDF as a combat medic. He studied the Jewish law and received the rabbinical ordination in Israel. And he works as a freelance reporter. So the gentleman knows what he's talking about of exactly what they're doing over there as far as reporting the news. Whether they realize what they're doing or not is another thing. Now, I want to bring out some biblical points to talk about what's taking place right here. All right. I went ahead and went one step further, and this was a picture that was in their press release. So what they're showing us, that in time, they will be sacrificing the animals, just like they did in the Old Testament before Jesus Christ was crucified on the stake. So what does this mean? What could this possibly mean to God's people, to biblical prophecy in the return of Jesus Christ? Well, we can't know all what it means, but I want to tell you something that maybe you haven't thought about in this fashion before. Hebrews 10 tells us that Jesus Christ is our high priest. Now, I didn't want to take the time to run through the whole chapter, but I want you to do this. Take, take it right down. Hebrews 10, go back and read that chapter today. In Hebrews chapter 10, in verse 12, Jesus Christ, the writer of Hebrews, says, But this man, talking about Jesus Christ, who had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. One sacrifice for sins forever. It's, it's over. There was no more need for the sacrificial system. So when I read what was going on with this new high priest, we have literally seen the Jews of today displacing, not because they didn't accept him to begin with, but totally rejecting Jesus Christ as the high priest. Now, let's carry that one step further. If you reject Christ, you are also an antichrist. So therefore, you're going against Christ. So the instatement of the sacrificial system, the instatement of a high priest has just replaced what the Bible says that Jesus Christ is and has done. All right, so let me go just a little bit further because I didn't, I didn't want to cover all of this. Verse 16 says this, And this is the covenant that I will make them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and their minds will I write them, and their iniquities, their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more, let me repeat that, there is no more offering for sin. So what are they doing over there? They're doing everything contrary to what the scripture tells us needs to be done. They have rejected Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They have replaced him as the high priest, and they are bringing back in the sacrificial system. Does that tell us anything? All right, so let me carry it a little bit further before we wrap this up today. In Matthew 25, 15, it says this, Therefore, 
when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand or let him beware. Now, what are we looking at? While many people are going to be looking at these sacrificial systems as some great thing ushering in the return of Jesus Christ, it's doing just the opposite. Totally opposite of what Jesus Christ said needs to be done. This abomination, if you go back and you read into the scripture, you'll see that spoken of by the prophet Daniel. So if you went back to Daniel, he was talking about the prophecies and what would take place. And I wrote just a couple of things is that in three places in Daniel, is in Daniel 9, 27, Daniel eleven thirty one, 31, and Daniel 12, verse 11, talks about the desolation and abomination in the holy place. From the Maccabees, which is not scripture, but it is historically documented information that the, doc, that, that the Maccabees actually wrote about the sinful root that came forth in talking about Antipas Epiphanes, and I don't know if I have him. Yeah, there's Antipas Epiphanes that he sacked Jerusalem and he sacrificed swine on the altar. So now we in the church have known for years that the duality of the former and the latter of what Daniel was taking place, that this man, Atypus Epiphanes, was the former. And so that when we look into the New Testament and we're talking about the abomination that makes desolate, we have been always thinking that it would be some pagan god coming in to the temple and sacrificing just like with a type of epiphany, some animal on the sacrificial system that's not supposed to be there. But what if? What if this new sacrificial system from the Jews themselves, because this is an abomination to God, there is no more sacrificial system, and they begin the sacrificial system somewhere in the near future with the animals what if that is an abomination that makes desolate? Now, why would it make that desolate? Because, because the Muslims are not going to go for this. Because many people in the rest of the world are not going to accept that. The Christians are not going to go for that. The Pope won't accept it. And it could begin to bring about what we talk about in Luke, armies surrounding Jerusalem because of what's beginning to take place. And so when you see those things, God says, take where? Because things are getting very close. So when we look at this and we look at events that's taking place from around the world, we need to beware of what's going on. Oh, by the way, back, let me back this up. This bust is a bust of Antiochus Epiphanes. It's actually in a museum in Berlin, Germany. It's amazing that, that this is, they brought this forth as a, as a point of where the worship was in the Old Testament, that that still remains and it's actually in Germany today. So I just wanted to bring that out so that if you go look and do a little bit of research. Sacrifice in a holy place, we always thought that some pagan worship service would do it, but it could be that we're beginning to see the beginning of that is. So let me reinforce what ifs. The new sacrifices of the Jews is the abomination that we're talking about in the New Testament. I don't know. I think it bears watching because it fills the parameters of the abomination taking place in the holy place. Jesus Christ is our high priest and his sacrifice has removed sacrifice once and for all. So whatever people do is an abomination to Jesus Christ that is against Christ, which makes that an antichrist. And that makes the newly appointed high priest an antichrist, replacing our high priest. So I think you'll take some time to look at that. I think you'll find that very interesting. Share that with your friends. Before I go, one more thing. We're working on a new TV special called The Constitutional Christian, Freedom by Divine Promise. We've been hard at work. We'll be going on the road next week to do some filming. I don't want to tell you who we're filming yet, but stay tuned. Next Friday, God willing, we're going to bring you some great news about the new special that's coming next month. God be with you. Thanks for tuning in to our email alert this week. As soon as we find a name, what we'll call these, we'll let you know. Until next week, God bless you and have a great Sabbath.